Well, here we are. Of course, we've got the, the Derwent River and the Government House behind us in the, the Rosny area of Clarence. And uh, we are continuing to, to reflect on both the Book of James and on Mums being Mother's Day. And as you've already heard uh, from Rodney, there is something about being a parent that means you've got to kind of put your own needs aside. I, I still remember the, the first moment that really started to dawn on me. Uh, it was the, the, the morning I woke up on the first holiday that Leanne and I had with Maddie. You see, it had been quite a big deal having a little baby. I'm looking forward to seeing our Pastor Paul down here from a Nepali congregation in Manisha expecting twins any moment now. And, and, and they're about to find out how, how big a deal it is to have your first baby. And uh, we were both tired and I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll organise a holiday. And we, and we went away to a caravan park. And, and I still remember this sense of bewilderment. As, I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, but when Maddie kept waking up in the middle of the night and, and, and this realisation that kids come with you on holidays. Babies don't know that holidays are the meant, a, a time when you're meant to be sleeping in. And... Uh, I, I started to realise that being a parent uh, is largely about persevering through moments where you, part of you would like to have an easier option. Do you ever have moments like that where you, you like to find an easier way out? Well, I think right at the heart of parenting is this thing of hanging on when you, you want to find a, a, a different, it's part of you at least, that would like to find an easier option. And, and you hang on because you love. That's exactly what uh, James is talking about here. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me. James chapter 1. And we're going to look at, James basically outlines two approaches to life. He says there's this way which leads to life. And there's this way which he says leads to death. And I, I think it's what we're hearing now from James is really important. Because sometimes I feel like we've watered down the gospel so that we've made it about just what happens when you die. But what we'll hear from James is, no, the gospel's much bigger than what happens when you die. It's how you live now. So James chapter 1 verse 9, actually rather verse 12, says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Now that's exactly what you wanted to hear, isn't it? Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Well, is it true that if you, if you were to honestly look at uh, the things you appreciate about your parents, is they've time and time again put themselves aside. Uh, what what I, I love here as we see a family going past on their bikes is fa to be a parent means to organise your life for the sake of your kids and to put your own needs aside. It means you have to persevere through all kinds of trials. And what James says, if you persevere in the face of trial, you'll be blessed. And the word there, blessed, is exactly what the, the same word that Jesus uses in the Beatitudes. And you've got to understand, blessing is quite different to happiness in our understanding of happiness. Happiness is an emotional thing. Blessing and being blessed in this sense is much more than just an emotional thing. It is, it is the deep sense that you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing for the right reasons. It is this real sense that you are in God's hand and it's gonna be okay because God's in control. That's what blessing's about. And you know there is no richer experience in life than knowing that you are in the palm of God's hand, at, in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time for the, for the right reasons. And there's a deep joy that comes from that. That's what James is saying, you will experience. But how do you experience that? Not by getting lucky, but by hanging on, persevere under trial. That's, you know, we, we, trial here is very clearly, it's a, a circumstances that you wish were different things that are difficult. We all face trials and we've all been facing a real trial. Uh, the whole COVID-19 moment 
has been a trial for the entire world. And it's interesting, isn't it, to see people's different responses. Some people quickly want to avoid the pain and others are ready to, to do the difficult work. And James is saying here, I think he'd be saying to us in this COVID-19 moment, don't try and short circuit the, the hard work that is needed. He's saying the, the one who perseveres under trial, having stood the test, will receive the crown of life. It's interesting that when, when we think of the word crown, often, I don't know how you, what comes into your mind, I, I picture like a, a golden metal thing with coloured stones. Well, actually, that's not the crown he would have been talking about. He would have been talking about the laurel wreath that was put on the heads of the athletes at the Olympics. And when he says the crown of life, it's not like a, a crown with the word life written on it. What he's saying is the crown is the life that there is a tie up between being willing to hang on in the midst of difficult things. And earlier, of course, the whole book of James is introduced by this whole thing of perseverance under trial because perseverance helps you grow up and helps you become free. And, he, and he come, he's coming back to that whole theme and he's saying, if you, if you persevere when things are difficult, you know what's gonna happen? you're going to encounter life. You will have life now, the crown of life now. <laughs> There's a dog up there that's pretty keen. I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone. He was wanting to say hello. Um, and and it, he doesn't stop there. He says, it's the crown of life that the Lord is, has promised to those who love him. Where, where does your perseverance come from? How can, how can you possibly persevere when everything in you is wanting not to persevere. Well, James is saying it's actually pretty simple. The motivation for hanging on when things are difficult is you look to Jesus and you know he's got you. He loves you. And as you look to him and organize your life around him, then it's a lot easier to love other people and it's a lot easier to persevere under trial. And so, I, don't, I know this is probably not something you want to hear right now. There, there is a, I, I've mentioned it a few times, that there's, there is a, a brand of faith uh, that says, look, if you just do points A, B, C, D, then God will give you everything you want. Now, that's not actually faith, that's heresy. Uh, and I bet, but I bet you there's part of you, like just as there's part of me, that would, gee, I'd love to have some magic thing that could take all the pain away from life, wouldn't you? But what James is saying is if you had a magic thing that would take all the pain away from life, you would miss out on life. And in fact, we know that. We know that for many of us, we look to take the pain away when we're not going so well and we reach for anaesthetics. For some, for some of us, it's food. For some, it's alcohol. Some of it gets stuck in pornography or others, you know, get focused on home beautiful and that's their that's their drug or whatever it is i don't know what it is for you i don't know what your anesthetic is it could be netflix uh, but we all have these strategies to avoid the trials and and what james is saying as you avoid the trials you avoid growing up and you actually avoid life is what he's saying he goes on and um and and it kind of sounds like he starts a new topic but he's not he says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. It's very clear, and we'll see why very clearly soon. He isn't changing another topic. He's saying that there, and I think one of the, you know, he's starting to talk about temptation. And there are all, all kinds of temptations. But implicit in every trial you'll ever face implicit in every difficult moment you'll ever face is a temptation. And it's the temptation to start thinking about yourself rather than God and other people. And uh, I think what James is saying here is when you're facing trials, I know it's, there's going to be a temptation to take an easy road out, to look for the anaesthetic, to, to see if you can fudge your way through, to avoid the pain. And James is saying, uh, don't, don't go for the temptation. There's a whole bunch of other temptations as well. It's not just the avoidance of pain, all, all kinds of, but, but at its core, at its core, most of us 
uh, are tempted to avoid pain and, and, that, and that's often at the core of most of the temptations we face. And what does he say? He says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, because God can't be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. And then in verse 14, we see, interestingly enough, that the, the translators of the New International Version and many other translators added a word to the Bible. Because they, they say, each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Do you know what word they added to that verse? evil. Sort of implicit in the text is the idea that our desires are evil, but the danger by adding the word there can make it sound like it's some external thing that comes in. Actually, what in the Greek and what James actually wrote, he said, is that we are dragged away by our own desires and enticed. What James is saying is you need to fess up to the, the part of you that wants to get as close to anything that feels good and as far away from anything that hurts as possible. He's saying your desires can be your problem in life. If you, and, and this is so countercultural because we live in a society that says you should do what you feel like doing. Is it any wonder that we live in a society that is getting more and more immature? and rewarding people who are immature. No, James is saying, look, if you wanna, if you wanna live according to your feeling world, then you, you are heading down a dangerous path. He actually says, each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own desires or evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. You see how what James is saying there is in three different stages. And, and uh, there's a, a, about 15, 1,600 years ago, there was a guy called Bede, the, the Venerable Bede. And uh, he said that there are three stages of temptation. The first one is the suggestion, the, the impulse, the feeling, the thing, thinking, oh, gee, I'd like to do that because this over here doesn't look so good. Or sometimes for mums, it can be, oh, I can hear them crying, but just another minute sleep, please. (laughs) I don't know what it is for you. But sometimes, what I know is for you, is there'll be plenty of times where there's your feeling world wants to take you away from the trial. And, And therefore, away from the life that James talks about. And what he says is, Uh, What Bede says is, after the suggestion, then you move to experimentation where you try it. And then after experimentation, you move to consent. And he talks about three different levels, these three stages of of stepping away or or temptation. And what James is saying, he's, he's, he's talking about three stages too. He's saying, so there's the desire, then the sin, and then death. And you can see how in the first few verses, James is talking about the path to life. And in his last few verses, he's talking about the path to death. My dad used to say, there is a kind of life that leads to death. And there's a kind of death that leads to life. On this Mother's Day, we celebrate all the mums who have made the choice to die to themselves so that their kids can experience life. And funnily enough, in their own journey of dying to themselves, they find life too. Have you noticed that? And for all the dads too, we're so grateful for all of you. But for all of us, this, I reckon this gets right to the heart of the, the crisis we all got to face. I had a mate this week who was telling me about uh, a conversation he was having with God. Uh, and, and he said to me, we got, we got, we got, I got to a point where God was kind of saying, do you want to keep focusing on yourself or do you want to stop doing this? Do you want to move on? And I think this is God's word for all of us this morning. Let's, let's look to our mums when they're at their best. We all know our mums weren't perfect and they're not always at their best. But when our mums were at, our best, at their best, they loved us so much that they put our needs often ahead of their own needs. And let's then 
with that view in mind, understand what it means to step into the whole story of life that God has for us. That is there if we can order our lives around the truth and the knowledge that God loves us and he's got us. And as you order your life around Jesus, then you can hang on when things get difficult. Let's just pray. Jesus, thanks. Thank you that you have got us. And I, I just want to, uh, again, we've already prayed in the service, but I want to pray again for our mums, that you would help them know how much you value them and you see the sacrifices they make. Can you also, Jesus, I pray, help each one of us face the part of us that uh, wants to get away from stuff that hurts and get close to stuff that feels good, that the part that wants to minimise pain and maximise pleasure that James is talking about here. and help that, not, help that not win. Help us have the courage to persevere under trial and to step into and receive the crown of life that you promise. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.